What's up, Pumpers? Jerome here with another classic Season of Mastery video. Today, I'm going to be covering a bunch of hardcore tips that I picked up while playing the new hardcore mode, and hopefully, I'll be able to get you to 60 with a little less pain and suffering. Before we get started, please click that like button, hit the subscription button as well, and that notification bell, or I won't be able to keep making videos like this one. You are not prepared. The first thing I wanted to cover is your mentality, and this is very, very important when doing a mode like the hardcore mode. It applies to pretty much any video game in general if you're doing challenge runs. For example, back when I played Dark Souls, it, it's, it's very much the same thing. You have to accept that failure is going to happen, and when it does happen, you're going to learn from that failure. If something bad does happen, you don't immediately get frustrated and very, very down about it, which is even, I, I've had this happen as well, where I die in game and I get really frustrated. I've had a couple deaths in the hardcore season mastery mode and they got me really down until I realized, wait a minute, every one of these deaths is not gonna happen again. I'm not gonna just die the same way. So if I died a different way the next time, that's good, that's learning, that's progress, that's getting further. The whole idea of hardcore is to ideally learn and get better at the route you're doing, optimize your route, add new things to your route, learn more about the enemy types, the zones, the mobs, learn everything about the game and become a more well-rounded player, a well, more well-rounded leveler. This is easily overlooked. You might look at everyone getting 60 and be like, wow, why, what, why am I not getting 60? Am I a bad player? And the answer may not be that you're a bad player. It may be that you lack knowledge, right? You lack knowledge at the specific game mode you're playing. And that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing. That means you have more knowledge to gain, more things to improve upon. And that means you're going to keep learning and growing as a person. And you're going to be more than you, you were when you started the mode. And I would much rather be the person that's always learning and growing and pushing forward than the person that's sort of stagnating and thinking they know everything. So honestly, I think if you're going to improve your mentality, it's going to make the mode that much more enjoyable. And you're not going to be so down when you when you die. You're going to actually realize it's a learning experience and the whole mode is about learning. Next up, I wanted to cover a mechanic that's probably getting you killed quite often, which is the mob leash mechanic. And Tommy Salami covers this very well in, in great detail in a video. I'm going to put that in the description. Basically, the way the mechanic works is a timer starts the second that you attack a mob and basically the mob can leash back to its initial spot if it gets 31 yards away from where it started. And the important thing to note is that there is a timer that is about 12 seconds. Can be more, can be less. But the way it works is after the 12 seconds, if you haven't attacked the mob, if, you, if you've continued to run away, it will leash back to where it was. And there are exceptions for this. And, and the really important thing to realize here is if you attack the mob or you frost over the mob or you counterspell the mob or pretty much anything, the timer will reset and you'll keep pulling the mob. And so a lot of people try to CC a mob and the timer resets. So you're back to zero out of 12 seconds. And this is really, really bad news and you could easily die because of it. And the other thing worth noting as well is that if you stand still for a second and a mob has time to hit you, this will actually reset the timer as well. So if a mob knocks you down, that can spell real trouble. So you have to pay a lot of attention to mobs that are going to knock you down or CC you. These mobs will actually be resetting their leash timer when they, for example, let's say a mob nets you and then it just starts wailing on you. This is actually resetting the leash. So you really want to pay extra attention to mobs that can CC, mobs that can, can net or stun, for example. And also make sure you're not just throwing out spells and attacking a mob as you're running away. If you can fully understand the leash mechanic, it will definitely cut down a lot on the panic and stress when you're running away from mob. And it will probably cut down on death as well. Basically, it, it, a lot of times when I was running away from a mob, it would keep chasing for a really long time. And I wouldn't be sure why. And if you understand that there's a, there's a constant internal timer going on and certain things can reset that timer, it makes it a lot less stressful. Next up, I wanted to cover spawns. And this is very, very, very important with the super overcrowding right now. The Obsidian Edge server that most people are playing hardcore are on is one layer right now. So everything is packed. Everything is absolutely crazy. And this means caves. This means really, really, really dangerous areas have mobs spawning like crazy. And there, of course, are hyper spawns in certain locations. And this, this is something you're just gonna have to learn with time. Basically, hyper spawns will require mobs to exist in the area. So if, if for example, in we the Westfall area, there are Defias spawns that have to exist. And so mobs will constantly repopulate all the time, which means if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you might end up getting surrounded by mobs really prevalent in caves right now as well. You'll see mobs, all of a sudden three or four mobs just spawn out of nowhere in a cave and you might be dead, especially because with crowding, you'll notice that people sort of just don't help you if, if a lot of mobs spawn on you because they'll assume you already have the tags. They're just going to naturally with human nature, assume you already took the tags and they're not gonna really wanna help with that. 
So you have to be extra careful with the crowding and crowding deaths do count. So just because there's a lot of people there, it does make it harder. It's a whole new skill set to learn playing around crowds. And honestly, my biggest tip with that would be to get to other zones, get to those those more dead zones. Dark Shore is great. Areas like Desolus, nobody is going to Desolus. So if you can think logically, where do people want to go and go elsewhere, that will really cut down on death. Speaking of crowding and caves, caves are the absolute no-no for hardcore. Do not go into a cave unless you are very, 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 very confident. The reason you don't go in a cave is simple. You do not have a guaranteed way out if you go in a cave because mobs can spawn behind you. And this is a really common way to die because let's say you go deep into a cave and then you pull too many mobs, you don't really have a way out. And that is really, really bad news if you're playing hardcore. I would say caves are probably, I mean, they're, they're an enormous percentage of the deaths that you see in hardcore. And even in the starting Elwyn Forest area, you see people die in the Cobalt Cave all the time because you go in deep, it's safe, it's fine, and then you pull too many mobs, you try to run out, and now you're pulling six, seven, eight mobs going out the exit. So I'm not saying completely avoid caves, but just completely try to, try to get a feel for when mobs respawn and when they'll come back and, and play it safely, play it around those spawn times. And if there's a lot of people in a cave, don't go in that cave because that's a death trap. So of course, you know, caves are really dangerous for hardcore, but this applies to really anything as well. Basically, if you don't know the exit for an area when you go into it, you're risking death. So let's say you wedge yourself into a camp of uh, trogs or whatever it is, and you get overwhelmed. If there are a bunch of them blocking your exit, you're in huge trouble. So there's an example in Ashenvale. There's a named mob that you have to go kill and he has a lot of fell guards on the way to him. So I pulled this guy uh, yesterday and I almost died to him, but I had already pre-cleared the area. So I knew even if I failed to kill him, I would have a way out and it made it a lot safer for me. And this is something you have to think about. Think about your exit wherever you go into somewhere you're not sure about. Obviously, if you're just grinding mobs and you're way high level, you're gonna be fine. But if you're doing a, something you're not sure about, it's really good to pre-clear mobs and understand when they're gonna spawn again and always kind of know what your exit is gonna be. Think about like, okay, if I'm gonna get out of this area, how am I gonna do it? What should I do? And and always think, especially when you're going to confined spaces and, and caves and, and weird little valleys and things in Red Ridge, for example, you gotta think about where is my exit? How am I gonna make my escape if things go bad? My next tip might sound a little cowardly, but it's something that you can improve on with time and, and more knowledge and skill, which is to avoid named mobs for a while. Most of your quest guides and your general routes will, will involve killing a lot of named mobs. And most of these named mobs are surrounded by other mobs. Not only are they gonna have a huge amount of wait time with the crowding going on right now, but they're usually really, really, really dangerous. And an example for me is Belly Grub. I had never fought Belly Grub because I always did a horde leveling. And Belly Grub was I, something like level 24 and I was level 17. Belly Grub basically foreshot me and set me back about 10, 12 hours. So this is the kind of thing you really, really want to be uh, aware of is that these these high level, scary name mobs are, you, you, you can definitely do them and they're great XP, especially with the 40% bonus XP. But you want to kind of make sure you're at the right level for it. Really understand the area. Maybe right now get a little bit high leveled and then go do those named mobs. The XP will still be really good. You don't want to risk your character on something you've never done before. And most of the name mobs, with, with a few exceptions, are really, really scary. In that vein, not going too cowardly here, but getting a level or two up on a zone really, really, really helps to fix mistakes and honestly will make your experience that much better. Of course, there are so many quest guides and, and ways to, to route things out, but if you kind of ignore those guys a little bit and you go to a zone a level up on where you should be, it will still give you basically the same XP. Honestly, the XP penalty for being a little bit higher in a zone is much better than the penalty you get for being lower in a zone. I mean, how many times have you been in an area trying to kill mobs and you constantly have to run away and reset and, and you're barely, you barely make it out? That's not giving you an experience. You're getting nothing from that. You would get more XP per hour from grinding random green mobs than from doing a quest you're way underprepared to do. And I always try to think about that. And it's so much faster to do a zone. Like let's say Red Ridge is really crowded on the weekends. Well, you could just be up a couple levels and then wait until let's like, say Monday or Tuesday night. And then boom, you're, you're going in there and cleaning it up. You don't have to be married to 
doing a zone at the exact right level, sometimes being one, two, three levels up is really, really efficient. My next tip is pretty obvious for most people, but apparently wasn't obvious for me. Don't write in streams and, and watch movies and do random things that are going to take your attention away. If you want to stay alive, it's really, really, really important. You're giving the game focus. I died watching a stream and writing in a stream. I just immediately ran into a pack of bears and wolves. It's usually better to clear mobs, even if you're five or six levels up on the mobs, not having them all chasing behind you and, and creating this big pack of mobs is really, really uh, advised. I have died from having four or five mobs on me from running through a zone. It's really easy to do and very, very, very avoidable. Obviously, you could run on the road, but if you just clear everything you go through, it's really, really safe and honestly advised. My next tip is a little more niche and this is Alliance specific, but if you are in Duskwood, hot tip, you can fly between Westfall and Darkshire. So this is a really good tip because if you want to avoid stitches and, and all the random hassle you have, things like Eliza blocking your way, you can just fly between Westfall and Darkshire. A lot of the quests are actually a little bit more efficient doing that as well. Flying back and forth is really, really nice tip if you're on Alliance. Speaking of stitches, you do want to always keep in mind all the named mobs and scary things and patrols in the zone you're in. I try to keep a mental checklist of every in every zone I'm in. What are the mob patrols? And obviously this comes with experience and knowledge and it's not really just gonna be there day one. Try to think about the patrols. What's gonna come through when you're in a, an area? What's gonna come through and disrupt you? I'm not asking you to memorize everything, but the big ones, Stitches, more Ladeem, any sort of patrol going through an area, you have to consider it or you'll just randomly die and, and you kind of have to watch the path of mobs and, and, and sort of get a little bit of a memorization going of what's in a zone, what's scary, what, what elites are where, what, I mean, for example, the big dragon in uh, Hillsbrad that when you're farming the turtles, he can just roll up on you and end your career. This mode is much more than just risk mitigation. I think people like to dumb it down like that and say, oh, it's just about not taking risks. But having an awareness of the risk is really, really, really important if you don't want to die. Speaking of risk mitigation, oh my goodness, there is an incredible add-on I've been using. It has cut down my death significantly. It's called Unit Scan, and this thing will, you can input any mob name, and then it will immediately pop up with a huge alert whenever that mob is on your screen. So you could do Stitches, Moral Adeem, you could do even Quest NPCs, you could do whatever you want. Boom, it pops up on your screen. Really, really, really good. It turns something like Duskwood from a living nightmare into a pretty relaxing, uh, relaxing environment some people may say that takes away a little bit from the game mode but if you're really you know on your your first couple runs and you really really want to push higher levels unit scan is really important and speaking of add-ons of course we have so many other add-on options questy is really 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 nice personally i have to have questy when i'm questing and things like rest xp for example very good for leveling routes the people who made the guide are pro speedrunners and although i'm working to get better at, at speed leveling it's definitely something that comes with practice and time and so if they send you into a big pack of elite mobs or into into a whatever, whatever they might do they might send you to do belly grub at level 17 use your own judgment think okay is this going to be a good idea or not and you might need to skip some steps i'm sure there will be revisions in the future but right now it's a pretty aggressive guide it's going to make you do a lot of uh, risky things and you may die because of it. My next tip is a mental tip. This is all about not dying stupidly for no reason. And God, it happens to me all the time. The idea of not being warmed up. So let's say you're playing a warlock. You have literally so many ways to survive. You have a health, a health stone, you have a health pot, and yet you still die because you walk into the wrong mob, for example, because you panic, you freeze up. Well, that's probably because you weren't warmed up. And you really need to run through everything you're gonna do mentally before you start for the day, especially at the higher levels. Let's say you're like level 50. Run through every one of your safety safety mechanisms. Run through what are you gonna do on a warrior if you're if you're about to you know about to die. What are you gonna do on a on a mage? How are you gonna play it? Maybe do a battleground to warm up. Maybe just play for 10 minutes. Don't play right when you wake up. And that's another one. I, I died because I played right when I woke up and I made stupid mistakes. You don't wanna freeze up and be like, okay, what, what button is my health pot? What button is my health cookie? What button is my void sack? There's so many things that you have to save you and yet you're not doing them because you're not ready and you're not warmed up. Warm ups are important in any sport, in any, any, uh, any pro gaming and yet you're not doing it when your life or death is on the line. 
I think that's pretty silly. You should definitely be warming up before you play hardcore. This goes for anybody doing the most. In the same vein, definitely never AFK in hardcore. Do not go AFK, even if you're in an inn. I don't care where you are. Do not go AFK. Log out, do the slow log out, and you'll be good to go. Do not go AFK anywhere. Do not tab out. Always have your health bar visible. And just do not go AFK. I will. I, so many people have died from going AFK or tabbing out or doing whatever. Just do not AFK. It's really, 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 really bad. If you're AFK, you will probably end up dead. Another really important hardcore tip is to keep up with your professions. You have two professions. You have all sorts of useful things that can really make or break your run, and you're not using them most likely if you get far behind the professions. The easiest thing to happen when you're doing your herbalism and alchemy is you don't find enough herbs and you get behind, and then every new zone you go to, you can't pick the higher level herbs. This has happened to me probably 20 times, and I swear it is so, so, so bad. If you have two professions and you're not using them at all at higher levels, you are hurting yourself in a massive, massive way. Imagine you having engineering and not having target dummies, for example. It's so bad. Target dummies will save your life so many times. Pretty much any bad situation you can think of, you might have been saved by a target dummy. So you got to keep up with your professions. Don't slack on professions. It's really easy to do, and a lot of people do. I understand when you're trying to go faster and you don't have a lot of time to just sit around picking herbs. But if you stay up with your herbalism, you stay up with your mining, you're, you stay up with your engineering, whatever it is, you will keep up with it and be able to do it from zone to zone to zone, and you won't fall massively behind and completely waste your professions. At the same time, it's very, very, very important that you keep buying health potions. Oh my goodness, if you don't get those health potions and mana pods from the vendors, you are missing out big time. Obviously, alchemy is great as well, but there is a huge list of viable potions that Joanna has on his website. Also, Statics has a add-on that will show you all the potion vendors as well. I'll link to both in the description. But the important thing to note here is you really, really, really want to stay on top of buying potions from vendors and making sure you have the best possible potions for your level available so that you don't have to worry and not use them. Rationing potions is a huge killer in hardcore. If you're not sure which potion to use and you get down to 30% against a raptor, they could just instantly kill you. So you do not want to be like, okay, should I save this potion? Should I use my worst healing potion? Should I use my, you know, better one? Like, you don't have to even think about that. You just want to be like, okay, I have like 15 of these good potions. Of course I'm going to use it and I'm going to save my life instead of having to like double think it and double check and then all of a sudden you die because of it. Hesitation is really, really bad and you don't have to worry about your potions and what you're rationing out. Another really important thing in hardcore is maintaining awareness. And of course, this goes back to the tips from before, like always having an exit plan, maybe checking for population, make sure that you're not in really risky areas and spots, but you can just have poor awareness. And it's happened to so many hardcore players. You are so concerned with properly kiting a mob and being efficient, or you're so concerned with, with being fast and turning your quest in, and you run into a South Shore guard, or you run into whatever, um, a, pack of, a pack of elite mobs, or a patrol. You have to maintain awareness. Where am I in this zone? Where am I currently? Am I in the right spot? Am I drifting too far to the left or the right or, or north or south or wherever it is? Do not let yourself just drift around. Think about like the fact that there are different level mobs in each, in each small area in a zone, and you don't want to just drift into a high level area, for example by mistake it's so easy to lose awareness and for just a couple seconds for example speaking of awareness there have been great clips uh, on twitch of people right clicking on the wrong flight master and losing their character that way because they get attacked by guards this kind of thing is all awareness it's all what what faction am i what what area am i in am i which 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 safe spot do i have which which base am i going to the horde base and i'm alliance for example it's an easy mistake to make if you normally play horde maintain awareness it's very important Speaking of awareness, I wanted to get back to crouch just for a second because crouch have been dominating my mind for probably four days now since they removed layering. You've got to always, always, always think about other players. You got to think about them when, in terms of griefing intentionally and unintentionally. Unintentional griefing can be just as bad as intentional griefing. Of course, it's not a big deal. It's not like the person's going to get banned for it. But you have to think about if somebody pulls a bunch of mobs and dies really badly, those mobs might go directly onto you. And you always have to think about that. I almost died a couple days ago because that exact scenario happened. You have to think about the fact that people might die and make mistakes in, in catacombs and in caves, wherever it is. Those mobs might go directly back to you and it can be an absolute disaster. In the same vein, keep an eye out for things like Terramus. Of course, everyone's going crazy for Terramus, but there are smaller examples of this happening. 
For example, you could be forced deeper into a camp than you want to go because of crowding, right? You go into a knoll camp and there's no knolls on the outside like they normally would be. So you have to go deep into the camp and then four knolls full because of it. That is a very, very common scenario for me. And you have to keep an eye out for that. You don't want to be forced into things you don't want to do because of the crowding. And you don't want to be getting griefed even subconsciously. If, if every mob on his own is taken, you might feel forced to do other things or do things you normally wouldn't do or push into more aggressive areas or go underground. You do want to resist that urge. It will not get you faster XP because you'll end up dead and you'll have to start all over. That leads me to a very, very, very important point, which is that patience is key. You do not want to do it all in a day. The entire point of hardcore and speed leveling in general is that it is done incrementally over time. You do not just magically have it happen one day. You have to improve your route. You have to improve your, your skill, your awareness of every mob. You have to be like, okay, in this last run, this mob hit a lot harder than I expected. So I don't want to pull three of them. And you, you go around the camp in a way where you don't end up pulling three of them. And just little tiny improvements over time. And maybe you're like, okay, I, I take this shortcut this way. I didn't know I could do that last time. And you save like a minute. And those all add up to hours and hours and hours until you're getting level 60 in like 70 hours. And it's amazing. So this is the kind of thing where if you try to rush it all at once and you add in like all your improvements all at the same time, you're going to end up dead. You don't want to be the guy who's just, just started doing hardcore and you're trying to pull five mobs at the same time, pushing things really fast. And this happens a lot after deaths as well. You don't want to push things if you're not fully aware of the zone and every possible mob and every mechanic. Why are you playing it like the people that do know that stuff? The very best speed levelers know a lot about the game. They have so much knowledge, and you can acquire that knowledge. That's the beautiful thing about the internet and your ability to learn. You're very smart, and you're very talented. But the thing you have to learn is it's not going to all happen in one day. You've got to learn and trial and, and error, and you're, you're not going to look bad if you die, but it's just going to look like you don't know exactly what you're doing. You're pushing it too hard. It's really, really important if you die to not try to just trivialize everything and speed back because you will just die again. The, even if you're really good at the game, if you pull a lot of mobs and you don't have a safety and mobs spawn in front of you, you're just dead. There are so many things. If you're trying to rush back after a death, you're going to end up dead. It's really important, really, really important to not just trivialize things and try to speed back to where you were. You see so many people dying at like level seven or eight, and it's, it's immensely frustrating. It's because they know they're good enough to get past that spot, but they're not taking it seriously. They're not thinking about it. They're not focusing. Do not try to be a speed leveler all in one day. It, it's going to take you a long time. It's going to take you a lot of runs. You can get there. You can improve every single time, but it's not going to happen in your very first run. Ideally, take things a little bit slower and a little less reckless. With all that covered, I did just want to say that you're doing a great job. If you're doing hardcore, you're already expanding your mind. You're doing something that is just really beneficial for the game. And there's so much potential for this mode. There's so much potential to ramp up the difficulty and interest and excitement and do cool events and tournaments. You're part of something awesome. And I'm really glad you're in on the ground floor. And so definitely keep with it. It's a, it's a cool achievement. If you can get 60, it's very impressive. I'll be there at your party if, if you invite me. Uh, so just keep up the good work. Keep going. Don't get too frustrated. Remember, it's all about improvement over time and progress and not giving up. Giving up is the only way to truly fail. So keep at it. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments how your hardcore journey has been so far. Have you been doing well? Have you been resetting over and over again? Has it been what you expected? Maybe more fun, less fun? Let me know in the comments. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.